Welcome to this reflection on behalf of Kidderminster Izmir Team Ministry. Thank you for watching and I hope that you'll find it useful. You know, we all belong to families. Maybe some of us have lost loved ones over the years, but we look back to those families. Some have had bad experiences, some have had good experiences. Some of us look back and with thanksgiving, some of us not. But the interesting thing is that our Christian family really is very much a reflection of our human family. And I would like to read a passage of scripture from Romans chapter 12. And this is talking about our spiritual family. And I'm starting at verse 9. Don't just pretend that you love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Stand up for what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honouring each other. Never be lazy at your work, but serve the Lord with enthusiasm. Be glad for what God is planning for you. Be patient in trouble and always be prayerful. When God's children are in need, be the one to help them out. And get into the habit of inviting guests home for dinner or if they need lodging for the night. If people persecute you because you are a Christian, don't curse them. Pray for them and God will bless them. When others are happy, be happy with them. If they are sad, share their sorrow. Live in harmony with each other. Don't try to act important, but enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Do things in such a way that everyone can see that you are honourable. Do your part to live in peace with everyone, so much as impossible. Dear friends, never avenge yourselves, leave it to God. And then it says at the end, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink and they will be ashamed of what they have done to you. Do not let evil get the better of you, but conquer evil by doing good. I'd like to concentrate really on the first few scriptures here and start with this one. Don't just pretend that you love others, really love them. Don't just depend, uh, pretend that you love others, really love them. You know, sometimes we can pretend that we like people or love people, but we don't. And yet in the early church, it was a mark of the Christian family. The mark was, and in Acts it says, that folks from outside would say, see how these Christians love each other. It was a witness. And that is something that we need, perhaps within our churches, to make sure that we do. You know, scripture tells us this, but also we are really other people's Bibles. It's no good saying that we go to church and we do things uh, and we are being good when people can see that we're not. They measure what they see in us. And it's lovely if people can say, see how these Christians love each other. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honouring each other. You know, it's so easy at times to be, well, I wouldn't say spiteful, but there are times when, you know, if somebody steps on our toes and tries to come where we, and do things where we've done things for years, that the hackles can go up. 
And yet, that is one way of stifling gifts and talents within the church. In our own families, it's a natural thing to encourage young people to do things. We train our children to cook and to do the washing and to sort things out so that when they become fully grown, they know how to deal with life. And we should be doing that within our churches, nurturing young Christians and bringing them on and recognising talents, loving them and really rejoicing. Not thinking that they're a threat to us, but praising God that we've had the chance to bring people on and be thankful. And if we look a bit further on, it says, never be lazy in your work, but serve the Lord with enthusiasm. At times it can be awkward. At times it can be tiring. At times we think, well, you know, I've done this for so many years. I'm fed up. I just want out. And I myself feel like that at times. You think, oh, not me again. Isn't there anybody else that would do this? But if we realise who our boss actually is, then perhaps we can have renewed enthusiasm. We can lose our first love. And I use this example, and many of you may have heard me use it. Those of you that have married can think back to when you first met your partner and the butterflies and the way you saw them. You couldn't wait to be with them. And that's the way some of us were when we first met Jesus. We couldn't wait to tell people that we knew him, that we'd become a Christian. And yet over the years that enthusiasm has, has just died and things become chores. And perhaps we need to get that enthusiasm back. And helping other people and seeing new people and their energy and enthusiasm can inspire us on. And being glad, it says, for what God is planning for you. God has a plan for our lives. We're not just here by chance. He has put us here to do a job and we need to be thankful. It is partly to build up his family and to bring new members into it. And be patient and always be prayerful. With all families, there are members of all ages. It may be that, you know, within your family, that you have got grandchildren and babies. And we need to be tolerant right across from perhaps the older person that is now suffering with dementia. We would in our own family. To the grandchildren who, why is it that grandparents sometimes find their grandchildren an absolute delight and can't wait to be with them? But coming to church, they're intolerant of young families coming in and I can't understand it. These children are part of God's family and we need to encourage and welcome them. Genuinely, as the first line of this passage says. When God's children are in need, help them. And that means materially as well as spiritually. If we are seeing people within our church that are struggling financially, who can't put food on the tables and things, and a lot of people are already doing this. In one of my churches that has now grown to quite a large measure from what it started with a congregation of 20 and was at death's door and now has a congregation of well over 500. But one of the things we did to start was start to invite new people as they came in to come perhaps and have a cup of coffee or lunch. And if you can't invite people because of whatever it means, um, financially or whatever, a cup of coffee is always a good way. You get to know people and to chat with people. It's the sort of thing that you would do in your own family. And if people within the church are struggling, we need to help them. 
And he said, if you're here again, if, if you're being persecuted because of your Christian faith and everything else, and you may be even ridiculed by other members in the congregation, we need to still love people. And as we go down through this, again, as Christians, we have people who come into the church, they're married, and it's a joyful occasion, and their little ones are baptised, and what a lovely occasion that is. But we also need to share sorrow. And that sometimes is where we can get alongside people to help when they are so vulnerable. And live in harmony with each other. Live in harmony with each other. It says in the next verse, if at all possible. And sometimes you try your best and it doesn't work. But make sure it, is, it isn't on your side that there is a problem. There are too many people that fall out with their neighbours and fall out with their fellow people in their families naturally and it happens spiritually. In Ephesians 4 it tells us not to let the sun go down on our wrath. That we need to sort things out. And yes, there'll be squabbles within churches the same as within families. But we need to get it sorted quickly because the longer it goes on, the more it festers, the more there is bitterness and it becomes much harder to be reconciled. And scripture tells us categorically that if we have something against our neighbour or our fellow Christian, we need to sort it before we come to the Lord's table. And finally, I like this one. Don't act important, but enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Bear in mind that this was written to the Roman church and the Romans thought they were a superior nation at the time because they were conquering people and there was an empire. So we need to get it in context. But there is a lesson there for us. We can always learn something from the smallest child to the oldest person. I always remember in one of the churches that I went to, standing at the back of the church and a young lad that was in my Sunday school at the time came up and asked for an order of service from the church warden. And the church warden turned around and said, oh, these are for just the members of the church. And he turned around and he said, well, I'm a member of the church. And he was absolutely right. People say, oh, children are the church of tomorrow. Wrong. They are the church of today. And we need to remember that. They are part of God's family. And Jesus made it very plain that we need to include them. He was very, very strong in his language of what happens if we don't. But don't be spiteful with people, it says in the last bit of this. Leave it to God, and that is hard. If people have wronged us and we feel hurt and we feel spite, you know, we feel we've been dealt with spitefully and the hackles have gone up and everything else, it is so hard. But, you know, there is a scripture that says that God is no man's debtor. And God will sort things out for us if we put it in his hands. So I hope that little bird's eye view of, of just going over those few verses you found helpful. Go and read it for yourself. I mean, you learn so much when you read the Bible. And every day there are lessons there that I find. If you look at my Bible, I've underlined, I've put stars between things, exclamation marks, sometimes question marks, because I don't actually understand what's going on there. And I will go and try and find out. But there's something new every day for us within God's word. So let's just bow our heads and have a little word of prayer. Dear Lord, at times we forget that we are part of a spiritual family, not only a human family. Help us to really love people so that folks around us will say, see how these Christians love each other. Help us to recognise gifts in people Help us to encourage and nurture 
our fellow Christians and make them feel wanted. And Lord, help us to recognise needs as well so that people are not in want when we can help, whether it be psychologically, spiritually, mentally, physically. Help us to be there for others the same way as you always are for us. Amen. And just briefly, I want to finish with a prayer which those of you that are Mother's Union members will know. It's Mary Sumner's personal prayer. And though it is one for the morning, I think it is still relevant. All this day, O oh Lord, let me touch as many lives as possible for thee. And every life I touch, do thou by thy spirit quicken, whether through the word I speak, the prayer I breathe, or the life I live. Amen. Thank you again, and may God bless you.